So my name is Jin Kang. I'm professor and chair of uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the Johns Hopkins University. Uh, you are at my biophotonics laboratory. Uh, this is an engineering laboratory where we build uh, devices, a system, and test them. And then once we build them, usually what we do is we send it to a, a medical school or the robotics facility, and we do testing and validation. So there's a lot of cooperative research that goes on here. Generally, we work, you know, things relate to uh, fiber optic sensors and, 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 and imaging devices and systems. But our focus is uh, our medical application. Uh, specifically, we focus on uh, uh, therapeutics. Um, we think that fiber optics technology could improve uh, surgical techniques help uh, doctors perform surgeries better, and then also when you get implemented into uh, surgical tools or medical robotics, we think fiber optic technology can make those robots surgical tools smarter. What we tend to do is we implement uh, fiber optic sensors or imaging devices into, for example, surgical tools or into uh, robotics. And then so, uh, for example, let me just give you two examples. Um, one is we develop what we call a real-time um, 4D OCT imaging. What it does is it, it allows the doctor to see the surgical site in, in, in 4D or 3D video. So they could make those very fine micro procedures uh, very precisely and allow them to see soft surfaces and then when they're making say suturing or they're making incisions they, they can make those things very precisely because one of the difficulty of uh, microsurgeries are that the doctors doesn't have the depth perception you know so you could see with operating microscope they could see XY plane very well but they don't have the depth perception and you have the hand tremor and also another thing that we do is that we also use this fiber optic technology to see the actual movement of the hand or the tissue and then we can actually compensate for it you know, by you know, attaching motor to the surgical tools and things like that. So we have what they call a smart surgical tool development um, that's going on. Uh, these are all funded by, uh, you know, mostly funded by NIH, uh, National Institute of Health. When you have uh, like limb attachments and things like that, this surgery involves suturing those tiny microvascular structures and nerves, you know, other, you know, many different things like connective tissues and things like that. And especially for, you know, suturing microvascular structure, it's very challenging, you know. And so one thing that we're trying to do is uh, use this technology to help surgeon make those sutures a very you know a precise and then and then accurately um, typical you know um, of vessels you know they, they they involve is like several millimeters and they have to put like you know like you know like eight to twelve sutures all around this small sub millimeter uh, you know vessel so think about how difficult it is so they usually do it free hand, you know. So we think our technology can actually help them make those uh, sutures, uh, you know, perform suturing much better. It's really a, a, a collaborative effort, you know. Sometimes we think that, you know, we're going to just develop the best engineering tools, okay. But it's useless until we develop something that, that actually could use. So there, you know, that interface is very difficult, and sometimes you have to make compromise. So what may be the best engineering tool may not be the best medical tool, you know. So you have to develop tool tool such a way that they could actually use it, and that is challenging because there is also then design aspect, the ergonomics, the easy of use, and things like that comes into play. Here is one of prototype um, um, uh, tool that we developed, what we call a smart surgical tool. So what it is, is it's like hypodermic needle, but sometimes we use it as a surgical pick uh, that um, we could use for uh, what they call virtual retinal surgery. So this is for eye surgery, okay? So what it is, is it has, so this one is an outer needle and also has an inner needle. It, which is a sharp and has a little pick to it. it within the inner needle, there is a fiber optic OCT uh, uh, sensor probe attached to it. And that inner needle, back end of the inner needle, is attached to an uh, actual motor here. So the way you use it, so this goes inside an eye, 
Okay, and then for example, make a small incisions, or you could actually inject, you know, a therapeutic agents in there. Okay, um, but what it does is so typically when you perform those surgeries, it's really hard to see into an eye, um, and then you don't really have actual, you know, uh, um, you know, um, this is depths of perception, and but the but you you are performing this delicate surgery on a retinal tissue. Retinal tissue, as you may know, is a you know, highly delicate uh, tissue. It's only like you know, 300 micron thick, and you're performing a surgery on, you know, on like, for example, a top layer, which might be like you know, two, three micron thick. What this tool would do is that, so the surgeon will use it like the normal pick, surgical pick, but without them really getting involved with what it does is that it knows exactly how far you are from the retinal surface, okay? And you could sense the, the movement of the hand because when it moves, the distance between the tooltip and the retinal surface changes. So using OCT, we can actually see how much it moves and using the motor, we can compensate for those uh, movements. And also if you do want to make, for example, um, you know, incision, then we can tell this tool to go exactly if they, for example, 10 micron or 50 micron deep into the retinal tissue, and then and then tell the motor to basically maintain that a uh, distance as you move across the retinal surface, for example, like that. So so we call it a, a smart surgical tool. So a simple motor plus the OCT uh, probe. I mean, you know, you know, we could we can make those very difficult procedures, uh, you know, very you know accurately. So we are hoping this would, you know, you you know be in, in the hands of uh, uh, doctors in hospitals uh, pretty soon.